simplistic as possible so that the kids will get it. If you give them something too complex, you'll lose some of them. So what we um, were deciding in our lesson is at first we would start off the week with giving them like basic vocab, okay? And then give them worksheets so that they start to get familiarized with the activity, with the stuff that we're trying to introduce them to. And then afterwards, um, then the next day, uh, throw a video on for them, okay? Because you gotta reach out to all the types of learners because, you know, you don't know if, if they're understanding the topic. So that's why you try to give them as many actual examples. And then you move your way up to an activity like the one that we're gonna do today that deals with the heart. All right, guys, so uh, the first thing we wanna do is I need everyone to briefly get up on your feet, please. We'll do activity. <laughs> what I need you guys to do is uh, put your right hand in the air, please. Right over here. All right, get your heart, uh, sorry, get your hand and put it to the size of the fist. So, look at your fist, guys. That's about the size of your heart. Maybe our hearts are probably a little bit bigger, but that's about the size of our hearts, okay? Now, what the next thing I want you guys to do is I want you guys to squeeze, open and squeeze your hand 70 times. Hard though. Count it yourself, count it yourself. Count it amongst yourselves. So good, I mean, so good. But you're supposed to be squeezing the ball. Oh, oh okay, okay. <laughs> Cardinal. There you go. There you go. Seventy times. Seventy. Seventy. Yes, there's a workout for you guys. I already did my cardio. Getting tired? Finished. Yeah. Hey, if you're done, put your hands down. Put your hands down once you're done. Okay. Like what Ayon was doing over there, um, he was squeezing the tennis ball. That's about about the uh, about the amount of force that your heart will have to squeeze that tennis ball in one pump. So, you were pretty stressed out, weren't you? Yeah, but it gave out. I think my hands numb. <laughs> <laughs> How many other guys got tired, too? Well, as adults, our heart can beat about 70 beats a minute, 70 to 80 beats a minute. And then when you're small or you're a little kid, go 90 to 120 beats a minute. So imagine, you know, by doing this, how you get tired. Imagine your heart works 24 hours in a day from the second that you're born to the day you die, that heart is working. Every minute, your body circulates all of your blood three times. So you have approximately five liters of blood in you, five at this, about five to six liters. And yeah, if you figure three two-liter soda bottles is the amount of blood that your heart is pushing through your body three times every minute. That's a lot of fluid pumping through your blood. The heart can contract and relax 100,000 times in one day, and also about 35 million times in one year, in a year. That's so big. Isn't that fascinating? Just some key uh, facts just to throw out to the kids so that they're like familiarizing themselves with it and also uh, real world applications. So what we need from you guys is now we're going to have, um, we're going to project the heart. So prior prior to, well, we have a little heartbeat, how it's going to normally sound, okay? This picture here would be projected. We're just having, there it is. Um, and then what would happen prior to the activity that we're going to do right now is we would trace a drop of blood uh, together so I would show them what it is that we're going to do, right? Uh, tell them that's the inferior, superior vena cava, the right atrium, the right cuspera, the right ventricle, the pulmonary center lunar valve, pulmonary arteries, and the lungs go over here, pulmonary veins coming into the left atrium, then the bicuspid valve, also known as the mitral valve, goes into the left ventricle, and then from there the aortic center lunar valve um, pumps it up through the aorta. So, Basically, they would already have this addressed to them prior to them even coming up, um, so that they're already familiarized with it. Now, what we need is nine of you people to come up here. Make sure you look like you want to be part of it. Right come on up, sir. Right. 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 right here. Right. 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 Uh, the little activity is going to involve, this is going to be a drop of blood, simulate going through the heart. It's going to take its first path. What are you? Superior and inferior vena column. Then it goes to? And then it goes? Tricuspid valve. Okay. 
Practice this a few times. Superior, inferior, vena cava. Okay. You guys think you could switch? You can handle it? Let's yeah. switch. Get to another spot. Will you? Okay. Okay. So, can we handle these people? Yes. Oh, I yeah. thought we were keeping the same thing right now. Nope. Well, you got something there? Okay. Superior, inferior, vena cava. At this time, we would then hand out this worksheet so that they can go through and label the different parts. It has this with the blanks on it at the bottom of the page. It has the word bank with the definition. So if they don't remember where it was, they can figure it out by the definition. And then the next day, they can come in and take a quiz. So we've done this two or three days. We've gone over it and over it and over it, practiced the flow of blood through the heart. So now they get to draw it and show what they know. And they get it. It's a really easy activity. And um, they incorporate it. And it's like they leave the classroom like, wow, I actually learned something. And so <laughs> that's pretty good.